Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. You're watching Poetry in Motion. I'm your host Tony Lontis and in a moment the gorgeous Sonny Singh will be joining us to chat all things poetry and writing. Now if you're listening live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch or Twitter, please shout out, please comment and let us know that you're there. If you've missed any of the live shows in this series and this is the fifth show in a series of six, please jump on to Tony TV available on Binge Networks, Hero Go, Paz TV and Zondra TV Networks USA and of course our YouTube channel where you can catch up and find all the information about all of the shows preceding this one. And a reminder too that if you have a smart TV, you can also download Tony TV and watch from your smart TV anywhere across the world. Now each week we do a welcome to country which acknowledges the beautiful work of our Indigenous people in Australia. And so I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and broadcast and pay my respects to the elders past and present and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders listening and watching today. Now, as I said before, this is the fifth in a series of shows called Poetry in Motion with international best-selling author Sony Singh, who is a cross-cultural seeker of deep knowing. She writes stories about self-discovery to encourage people to accept themselves for who they are and live the life that they want on their own terms. Her tales of her character's definitive moments on life's journey are both mystical and spiritual and integral to her storytelling as is her multilingual background. Sony is of Indian descent, born in Mexico, raised in Colombia, resides in the United States and is currently visiting Australia. That's a big mouthful. So when she's not traveling, writing, reading, she indulges in meditation, yoga and aromatherapy. And speaking of aromatherapy, I thought I needed some lavender peace gently billowing into my room today so that's what if you could smell it it's divine it's a divine combination of lavender and a few other things um, and it makes for a nice peaceful office space or broadcast based as it is today now Sonny's published three books in her soul seeker collection of poetry embody embrace and embolden and her first novel lonely dove which was re- released at the end of september is already an international best selling novel lonely dove hit the top of the charts last week and continues to do well for sony which is incredibly exciting for us and this week once again we get to talk to sony about her latest poetry um, release in paperback of embrace welcome back to the show sony Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be back. And it's an international bestseller. That's a new thing. (laughs) I know. Congratulations on international bestselling status. How does it feel, Sony? Because these things do not happen overnight. But when they do happen, how do you feel? I felt surreal. I still haven't realized or accepted it in a way. Uh, just because, you know, it was unexpected in my mind. Mm. I didn't think that it was possible to have it, but it did. And I'm embracing it. (laughs) Yay! Which is just a reminder to the audience that Lonely Dove is still on special on Amazon. And And this week, yay! (laughs) Look at that. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> and it's also available on Kindle because I've bought my Kindle copy as well. So um, paperback, Kindle. Are you going to do the ebook? Um, sorry, ebook is Kindle. Are you going to do the audio book, do you think? I don't know. Uh, that's mm-hmm. something that I haven't considered yet. I mean, it's sort of been mulling in the back it of my head. It is early. Yes. Because <laughs> we've only just released. 
it, there's a whole range of processes audience when you publish a book there's a whole range of stuff that goes on before you publish it then there's a whole range of stuff that goes on after you publish it and then somewhere down the track you go oh audiobook version okay that'll be the next thing and because sony has so many things currently going on not only is lonely dove um catapulted to best seller status she's also slowly releasing the paperback versions of her original hard copy uh, poetry series and this week we actually get to talk about the second in the series which is yay we've got another yay this know, like is I embrace like <laughs> so yes. embrace is releasing as a paperback today mm -hmm. and the links to purchase the paperback version or the hard copy because the hard copy version is a beautiful coffee table edition and so I encourage you, if you want something beautiful to set on your coffee table, embrace, embolden or uh, embody either one or even the three would look beautiful on a coffee table. But today we're going to talk about embrace because we're releasing it as paperback right now. So embrace uh, is more about the journey of the cycles of life. So I want you to tell the audience, Sony, about the ebbs and flows and what was happening to you at the time that you were channeling embrace because there were some big lifestyle changes for you happening and I'd love you to walk the audience through what was happening when these poems came to you um well you know the the three poetry books actually do tie in together and as uh, I shared with mm. uh, embody that was very much on a personal level within me what was happening not that embrace was not it was just embody was sort of the first step when i was writing the poetry for embrace i was mm -hmm. uh at a at, at a stage of, of flux i had yeah. already decided that i was going to not live alone any longer mm -hmm. uh so i had packed because it was COVID, life. wasn't it was like it was in the COVID. middle of it COVID. Middle of, of, it was the first summer of COVID. so we're talking mm -hmm summer well u.s summer australian winter mm. two years ago <laughs> yeah 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 uh and so i had decided that i was going to uh move in with with my parents and it was a good time for me it was a good time for them but it, there was this sort of how do yeah. i come to terms with all the things that are going on and all the changes uh and thus embrace was really about understanding that nothing lasts forever that we are in a yeah. cycle uh that you know we're in a cycle in life from our birth to a, our death but even in our day-to-day -day, uh you know the night turns day and there's change and there's transition constantly and so it was more about um how how do i come to terms with this how do i accept this mm -hmm. uh how do i make sense of everything that is happening around me uh, and to me, not just around me, but it was yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Also on a personal level. And so that's that's most of the poetry in Embrace. And it's kind of a big decision as an independent adult woman to go back home and live with mum and dad. As much as they love you and as much as you love them, it's still a big decision, isn't it? It is because, uh, you know, by then you sort of made a life and, and I had mm. moved at that time. I was living in Charleston, South Carolina, and I had thought when I had made that original move that that was going to be essentially it. Like I was just going yeah. to uh, settle there. Uh, and so to have to completely reshift and then say, OK, I'm going to move in with my parents. Of course, I also thought, as we all did, that COVID wasn't going to last that long. We yeah. didn't have this idea. So I thought yes. it's just going to be a few months, you know, I didn't, yes. I didn't think it was going to be a couple of years. A long. <laughs> so it just kept on extending and extending and extending. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, yeah, I mean, it was, it was hard on, on several levels in the sense of just packing up. Uh, yeah. All of my things still are packed up in boxes in my parents' yeah. house. I knew I was going to be there temporarily. I, and I still don't have an idea of where I'm going next. And so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really <laughs> and yes, that living in a state of flux where things are packed in boxes and you can't quite get into your own groove, so to speak, is challenging in its own right, isn't it? 
It is because you feel that you're neither here nor there. So you feel settled, but you don't feel settled. I mean, you have yeah. a place, you have your things. And it, sometimes it would be little things like, oh, uh, you know, I need such and such thing, but it's packed up in a box. Oh, but which yeah. box? <laughs> Start thinking, is it even worth it to go get it? Can I live without it? <laughs> but then also in, in a very odd way, you realize that you don't need as much as you have because you yes. stop remembering all of your possessions. And so, you know, you can kind of, it shows you also how adaptable you can be because you can make yeah. your life in, in as limited or as expansive as a situation that you have. Yeah. Yeah. And so how was it? How was it with mum and dad? I'm sure that they, because I love my kids being home, and I'm sure they loved you being home. It was it was a wonderful thing for all of us because, yeah. especially during COVID, um, mm -hmm. with everybody being so isolated, it was just really good for us to be able to come together. And yeah. you know, during that time, we hardly ever left the house. You know, yeah. you just you, you kind of manage your grocery yeah. shopping to to extend it as far as as you could be. So it's almost like the three of us formed our own little community, and it was beautiful. Yeah, uh, that's the good. perfect space to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so being in that lovely space and being in that like seclusion almost, it was good for your writing, wasn't it, Sony? It was excellent. It was excellent because I didn't have distractions. Yeah, um, I could just in a way allow the poetry to to flow a Flo lot of the poems that are in here came in that time as i was mm. kind of packing up and leaving charleston moving to idaho because that's where my parents are mm. uh and so a lot of that po poetry just poured out of me in a way that yes. um strangely and, and part of the reason that the the book is titled this way but made me embrace myself as a poet yes uh, i'd always considered myself a writer mm -hmm. or at least since i started writing the novel um mm -hmm. But the poet thing took me a while to, in fact, accept. When I was doing the poetry for Embody, I had no idea what was happening. Yeah. And by the time Embrace came along, I thought, oh, wow, I am actually writing She's poetry. Doing this. I can call myself a poet. Uh, yeah. And it was part of that also, like, here's something unexpected that I'm coming to terms with. <laughs> That's amazing, though. Um, I, actually, the thought um, occurred to me after we got off our call the other morning that I wonder if there are poets, poets rather, in your ancient genetic lineage. I wonder. Not Do that you know, we know, Sony? Not that you know? Oh. <laughs> no, not that we're wow. aware of. I mean, I know uh, some of my extended family, not extended, even cousins, um, yes. uh, write poetry, uh, but I don't know of anybody beyond that. I mean, it's also hard to say because, you know, a lot of things are lost. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have the ability or we didn't have the ability then that we do now to... Yeah, to pass down. Right or to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, pass down uh, things from one generation to another, but not that we know of. Wow, that makes it pretty darn special, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when we talked about um, Embody, we spoke about some of the um, uh, impacts, not the right word, some of you felt the poetry in it with bodily symptoms of aches and pains and things as you were channeling it but it was a little bit different with the poems that sort of have made up embrace um so what was actually happened it was kind of a bit more of an emotional journey wasn't it Sony? it was because with embody to be honest i didn't know what was happening um, yeah. uh i for embody um which was the first book i was just experiencing things and yep. the words seemed to be coming through me but i didn't quite either understand i didn't have yeah. a clear um i mean yes i knew i was writing poetry and and, mm -hmm. and i had started to think you know should i share some of this poetry should i not yep. should i tell people i write poetry should i not with embrace it was more of okay I write i'm doing this mm -hmm. and 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 but who am I? What's my voice as a as a poet, mm. as a writer of poetry? Uh, strangely, I started sharing some poems on Instagram uh, oh, around yeah. that time. 
Yeah. Uh, but but my thought was, let me just get comfortable with sharing poems, because eventually I'm going to have to get comfortable with sharing my novel. I did. I still yes. didn't think that this was something that would come out in books. I, I I didn't have that concept yet, but I was exploring more of my voice. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, mm -hmm. I started understanding that if somebody said to me, um, you know, write a poem about a strawberry. Yeah, I couldn't. But if yeah. I saw a strawberry and I was inspired by the strawberry, I could. Yes. Write a poem about a strawberry. Yes. <laughs> Which is <laughs> again, it's really a special gift, isn't it? It's really a special thing to to not only acknowledge that that's what's happening but to accept it and then just to let it flow. Because had you at any time thought, oh, no, this is not for me and stopped it, that would have been the end of it, wouldn't it? That would have, yes. It would have just stopped. And I wonder if they, wondering if there's people listening today that stopped themselves from some of those creative pursuits because they think, oh, I'm not a writer or I'm not a poet. I'm sure there's people listening um, and from you've been listening to Sonia and I talk each and every week again it, if at any stage Sonia gone nah this is not for me I'm not a poet I'm not then we wouldn't have this outlet we wouldn't have these three beautiful poetry books um, with us and we wouldn't possibly have a novel either so I just want to encourage people listening today that if there's something that you is coming to you naturally right speak about it say oh i've got this little story mulling around in my head and it goes something like this share it with someone because you never know where it's going going to go and i'm actually curious i need to know you were always planning on a novel and you were always going to write and publish a novel i'm curious to know at what stage remind the audience when the series of poetry actually started to take on a life and lead to publishment it was just a conversation wasn't it it was it was a conversation so uh karen mcdermott who is uh mm -hmm. my publisher uh for mmh press who publishes big shout out to karen and kmd <laughs> press and all the publishing houses she manages she's a phenomenal woman she is and i mean she has three so it's impressive yes, yes she know, does uh, yes, the kmd does. mmh and serenity press serenity. But, um, I, I had met Karen uh, at the Serenity Press uh, retreat in, in Crump Castle in 2019, uh, the one that, you know, you and I um, yes. attended just earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, so she had the same one three years ago. And at that point, I had established a relationship with her and really a friendship. And when COVID hit, um, she would reach out just to say, hey, how's yeah. it going? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, and I had told her uh that I was writing poetry and at that time I just said you know I've started writing poetry mm -hmm. and uh in a follow-up conversation she said are you still writing poetry yeah. and I said to her yes I have and you know I I, I showed her the stacks of paper because my poetry even to this day I handwrite <laughs> um, I, that's you know, awesome the novel, I can sit down in a, in a keyboard and in my laptop yes. and write it directly but the poetry my first draft is always by hand it's yeah. only when I put it on on the computer that I start editing and, and yeah. whatnot. But so I had a stack of papers that I you just, even I wrote on serviettes, paper. didn't you? Oh, like, yeah. There was a yes. notes and scraps of paper. It, yeah. Uh, Post-it notes. Yes. Uh, notebooks. Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I'll show, it's chicken scraps. Like that's a poem. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, we can see it's it. A poem called Melbourne. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> the city has inspired me. Um, yes, and so yes. I, I showed her and I... I, I thought I, you I, would I, like I, Melbourne. <laughs> I have. Yes. Uh, and when I showed her the, the stack, she just said to me, um, no, I actually said to her, I don't know what to do with all of this. And she said, yeah. well, I do know how to do what to do with it. <laughs> Why don't you, you know, put it together? And she said, send me a selection uh, and we'll take it from there. And so I did. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's embody sort of took shape on our follow up conversation when, you know, we were talking about the poetry and 
you know, as I was putting it together, realizing that there was a sequence uh, or, yeah. or a structure in a way to to the poetry with the chakras. Uh, and so we we discussed at that point only book one. Um, yeah. But as I started working on putting Embody together and yes. really realizing that that stack of poems was quite big. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> because between mm. the three collection, I mean, the three books in the collection, there's nearly 300 poems, which is a wow. lot. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a lot for, you know, a poetry book usually doesn't have that many. A uh, no. hundred per book is quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, so she then, you know, um, moved forward with Embody. And I, I remember contacting her, being like, I think I have more. <laughs> <laughs> and she's <laughs> like, <one>. yippee! <laughs> So then, yeah, we moved from uh, having one to having three. It's an amazing story, Sony. Um, when we talk about um, embrace and it being that more emotional journey, it was also, I remember us talking about the fact that it kind of aligned with the zodiac and the Buddhist life stages. So can you explain how all that interacts in embrace? Well, when I, so Embody to me was very straightforward in the sense yeah. that I think the chakras, I been, the chakras. Yeah. And I had been working with the chakras in, in, in a different mm. form. So prior to, I was uh, doing a lot of wellness coaching and aromatherapy and I used to work on chakras. Yes. So it was something that was present uh, for mm. me with mm. this one, understanding, as I said, that it was about ebbs and flows and, 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 and life. things uh, always in fact, always occur in cycles. Yeah. Um, I organized it in such a way that to me felt like, okay, here's me at the beginning of the cycle. Mm. And by the end of the book, you sort of get to me at the end of that cycle. Mm. Uh, and then I started curiously, just out of curiosity, looking at different kinds of cycles. And yes, um, I had been reading uh, about Buddhism and about... Uh, astrology because I was part of the course um, that I'm currently yes. pursuing Doctor of Divinity for. Yeah, yeah, so these yeah. things got started sort of coming together and me realizing not just that the poems could correspond to a cycle, but also mm -hmm. that there was some similarities despite two completely different yeah. forms of thought between the two and that they were both divided into 12. Uh, you know, there's ah. 12 signs in the zodiac, but there's also 12 stages huh. of life yes. in the book, uh, wheel, wheel of Life. Uh, yes. And then I started thinking like, oh, let's try to see if we can piece this together. And some of the things did correspond quite um, easily. Well, when it came to uh, emotional and maybe more spiritual qualities of what happens, Mm -hmm, but not mm -hmm. necessarily in um, sort of the overt thing. And by this, I mean, like in um, the, the in astrology, the, the yes. first house, which is the, the ego is all about the self. Yes. Uh, it also is about the self in the Buddhist wheel of life, but it's about the start of life. Yes. Uh, so it's sort of you trying to understand who you're trying to be. So, so the definitions somewhat corresponded even though they weren't exactly the same yeah because when i was reading about it so i could understand that the philosophy because i've not done a lot of reading around buddhist philosophy and i actually loved the explanation of of the first stage that that energy and it, it is ignorant and it doesn't know anything and and then it takes action that to for it to become consciousness and then so on and so on and so forth and so i thought that that was a wonderful way of linking your poetry and then further down it goes on to talk about the the five senses you know sight sound etc and how that links to um the various stages of life and then goes on and goes right through to the end where oh, obviously old age and death occur um but old age and death symbolically don't have to equate to a physical death do they sometimes that equates to a spiritual death or death of ideas doesn't it 
It does. And the thing with, with the Buddhist wheel of life is that it also recognizes that it, it's not just one life. Um, there's, mm. there's a rebirth process and the, that yeah. cycle um, puts that together because it says, you know, you're, you're born in this new life, having forgotten the old one. Mm. Uh, and, and you're trying to make your way in the world, trying to understand who you are. And yeah. that's, a physical birth but also on an emotional yes. level yes you know anytime you start anything new you're you're thinking you what is birth. this who am i in this you know trying to to understand and then as you grow in that uh process or in that place or whatever in your life you know yeah. you go through different phases of it until you get to the okay i'm done with this now the cycle is over and i need to move on from here and so with the wheel of life when you're talking about your life you're saying okay i'm done with this life yes uh, so you know your spirit or your 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 soul is preparing for the next one and your mm -hmm. body physically decays but yes. your soul moves on you know your, yes. your soul is ready to transcend to the next to the next phase mm -hmm. and what's interesting is in astrology the 12th house yeah. is about that higher consciousness um it's about you connecting with your higher purpose and your higher consciousness and so it's not necessarily a death but it yeah, is yeah. about being part of something more expansive uh which yeah. ultimately you know if you're moving on into your next life it is about being more expansive yeah <laughs> but but in your case it's about discovering the poet within and the growth of that poet and the expansion of your your poetry it all happened in that that sort of time so it was quite it aligns quite well in a break in embrace with those stages of life doesn't it? it 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 does and it would in in sort of any kind of life cycle i think for me you know we we've talked about uh the fact that a lot of the poems came to me um in a channeled form but i yeah. i didn't i wasn't even aware I, yeah i can say that now yeah at that point i really had no idea i just knew words came to me they're coming to and paper, you wrote them down and i need to write them down um it wasn't that i needed to write them down then and i would forget because i realized yes i was i was compelled to write it down but even if i had a thought process like for instance we we've talked about this too a lot of ideas yes. came in the shower well i couldn't you know get out of the shower and write down <laughs> exactly <laughs> I had to write until the shower was over yeah. but i would yeah. remember i would remember yes. like the idea stayed in my in my head enough to to be able to put them on paper and i think with embrace was me understanding that and me understanding mm. that there was a difference in how the poetry uh, came to me versus how I wrote the novels or the short stories yeah. that I was working on because the novel yeah. and the short story you I can sit think. down at any point and say okay this is where I'm going to work uh, and I'm, I'm going to dedicate this time and as you say yes I had to think and I had to say okay yeah. well I'm going to now work on chapter one or I'm going to work on editing or whatever it is whereas mm. the poems I couldn't dictate it. I couldn't say, yeah. okay, well, come to me now. It was more about just staying open. Yeah. Um, and that state of openness is your connection to understanding that the creativity and the source of creativity, yes, is within, but it's also without. It's also part of the what we call the yeah. universal consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yes, that 12 stage for me was recognizing, oh, I think there's something bigger happening than me with them, yeah. with my poetry and a lot of that is expressed and embraced at the end yeah. yes yeah yeah <laughs> sony poems are still coming to you it hasn't stopped yeah. has it <laughs> <laughs> as evidenced by the latest poem that sony's just started working on uh melbourne <laughs> before <laughs> before i go on though um can you share with us a bit about writing melbourne not the words but what you've experienced that sort of kick started that creative process again um I, I i get a lot of poetry written and this is the other thing that you know since the world's open up and i started traveling yeah. again i get a lot of my poetry when i'm in airplanes oh. uh, when i'm in trains something about the motion i don't know mm -hmm. if it's the, the the actual motion or uh -huh. Of physically moving from one place to another or simply the fact that you have no just like there's nothing that no distractions you're, like, you're, you're there 
<laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you. It's a great time to be distraction free in, in a plane. And, you know, when we were, the plane started descending into to Melbourne, there was this like carpet of clouds. And I just yes. kept them staring out the window and somehow, you know, it, it, it started, the, the, the words started coming to me then. But it wasn't until I got down off the plane, got in a taxi and came to the hotel where I'm staying, uh, went for a walk by the river, uh, the Yarra River that's right yes, here. Yes. The, the, the poem just came. So when I came back into my hotel room, I just started writing it Start out. Start writing. Yeah. <laughs> it was impactful. I mean, the city's beautiful. The journey into it is beautiful. It's mm. great to see the ocean. There's the river. Yeah. I mean, there's... Yes. There's so much going on in the city. That, and it's I was so just going to say, so uh, <laughs> good food and good places. What have you done? Into, so there's there's shopping and there's food and there's lots of places to visit within Melbourne. And then when you start to go outside of Melbourne, there's some amazing mountain ranges and little towns and all sorts of wonderful stuff outside of Melbourne. What is it you think that you align with most? Is it the people and the food or food? For me, there's just an energy about Melbourne that is quite different from any of the other capital cities, and it's a little bit unique, and I just love it. And lots of people will say the same thing about Melbourne. I don't know. There's just an energy. It's just like, oh, Melbourne. I just, it's, it's good. It's good to be here. It is. It feels. It feels very homey, even though it's a city. Mm -hmm. Like you just mm -hmm. really feel like yes. you. Yes. You fit. Uh, yes. And sort of in the sink of the city, like it was. Yes. I. I walked around a lot without a map just to see where kind of oh my, yeah yeah uh, feet take me so to speak yeah. and so for instance yesterday i ended up in chinatown without even knowing that there was a chinatown because i, oh. I had i had wanted to go to the queen victoria markets um, oh yes yes I, I, I walked all the way over there uh yeah. and then i thought oh well now i don't want to go back in the same way i came so let me just On see some different <laughs> yeah. a different road uh and i loved it i i lived in Hong yes. Kong for four years and this in a way reminded me like i felt like Aww. oh my god i'm in australia but i feel like i'm right back in hong kong but Aww. you know in a, in a different way <laughs> yeah 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 that's so that's to good to hear because i'm a very big fan of um, melbourne it's a great place to visit and i don't know it's just there's a vibe and 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 it, it really is good fun and yes the markets are amazing you've now just i'm like oh gosh it's been so long since i've been to the markets i have to go again <laughs> and yes chinatown's great and um there's lots of good food and lots Delicious. of things to do so it's i know there's really good food in melbourne so um which is why i don't understand why so many melburnians then decide to come to queensland because i'm like you've got a great space in melbourne but then they say so the other thing about melbourne is that the weather can be quite changeable so it can go from sunny to rainy to snowy and back again all in one day which i think is kind of fun and interesting <laughs> but other people don't like it at all <laughs> i was i was stuck in the rain uh yesterday so oh yes dry and beautiful uh yeah. the sun's come out a little like Cloud sun, cloud sun, but at least it hasn't yeah. rained. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I've experienced some of the Melbourne. All the <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Um, now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about um, and ask, because I know we talked about beta readers for Lonely Dove. What about for the poetry? I don't think I've asked you if you had beta readers for the poetry. Well, I, I informally did in that. I yeah. shared a lot of my poems on Instagram. On socials. Mm -hmm. On social media. Uh, I started mm -hmm. mostly only on Instagram, and then eventually I created a Facebook page and uh, yeah. started uploading the, the poems on there. Uh, there's a whole collection of them also on my website. Uh, I, I also post a lot of my blogs and my writing on medium.com. Yeah. Yes. Um, and medium is a good source because you you get exposure to fellow authors. Yeah. Uh, and so I started getting a lot of um, claps as you, you do on, on yeah, mediums. Yeah. Somebody reads your, yeah. your, your post and they like it, they clap. Uh, yeah. And I just started getting followers. Like I just started picking up followers on medium yeah. Uh, yeah. With, with my poetry. And in a way that was my, um, my beta readers, uh, when I started posting them on Instagram, I had 
either friends or people I didn't know private message me yeah. or even comment saying that one po one poem or another touched them. Touched them, uh, yeah. They, they, they resonated with it. One person even printed it and put it on their mirror and said they were Aww, moving it every day. Sweetie, that's Things lovely. like that. So I had, I had, I didn't have beta readers per se. No, but, but that's but for pretty poems, good though. I got, I got a lot of feedback and it, I can say that that's a lot of what encouraged me to continue yeah. writing because yeah, yeah, yeah. when you hear that somebody's resonating, you, you know, for one, yeah. I write the poem for myself, whatever yes. I'm experiencing in that moment or whatever my is happening with me in that mm -hmm. moment, not thinking about that... the other person. So when you share it and somebody else says, oh, wow, I've connected. Oh, that's with great. Um, you think like, oh, you know, yeah. here, here you go. We actually are all on this universal experience. Like, yeah. I think this is happening to me, yeah. but other people are going through the same thing. And so yeah. it's, it's, it's good. It's encouraging. Fantastic. Um, now, I want you again this week to read us some of the poetry from Embrace. And um, I want you to then tell us what that particular poem specifically means to you. And if you can remember where you were when it came to you, that would be really fascinating as well. So the poem that I'm going to read is called Radical Turnaround. Ooh, I don't think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's on page 148 in case anybody wants to read cool. it. Um, so I'll read it first and then I'll, I'll talk about yes, it. Yes, please. So I am in the midst of a 180, except I didn't go anywhere. I may have gone backwards a bit, needed the leverage in my step before I took a chance to turn a U. The, the days had grown bleak, boring. I had to face my reality, broken. I had reached a wall, stalled. Nowhere else to go, I felt. Hired a construction team, repaired, rebuild, putting back the pieces. Within, time is in my hands. I am letting go of so much, feels absolute. Outsiders no longer come before me. All they had to do was be. All I had to do was please. I needed that and they needed me. I tipped it over, I come first. It's the only way to move forward, not to slog away at life. Not what the tough, not, not what the thought distracts me. Where do I go with this new orientation? Which oyster do I take, world? Eating would be more fun, satisfying. For that, I need strength, direction, and an airing of dreams or an expansion with a with this radical turnaround new chances a newfound resolve intentions i can finally get back to living this existence has more possibility on my own terms empowered yay thank you so tell us about that poem sony so that poem um is a lot about interestingly what we have been talking about yeah me realizing um that i had reached a stage of no return in terms yeah. of leaving charleston and having to move to uh my parents house and it was me coming to turn like okay mm. well I've, I've been here my life is turning in a different direction i don't quite know where i'm going i don't quite mm. know what is happening mm. uh I can feel that this is good for me, but I also recognize that it's my choice to make something good for me, that I have yes. to take that ownership of saying, you know, and I, I played on the, the, your world is your oyster type of scenario and saying, mm. well, yes, I know my world is my, my oyster, but at the same time, it's up to me to, to take that chance. It's up to mm. me to take that step to turn this around. Um, so it was, a, it was a thought process of I'm in this place that, I'm not really sure I feel comfortable in, but I'm going yeah. to make it. Yeah. So, Sony, there's something in that um, space of feeling uncomfortable. And um, for a lot of people sitting in that uncomfortable space and just seeing what happens often leads to life-changing circumstances or life pivots. 
and it feels like that happened to you. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. Because when I, so when I wrote this poem, I still had not published poetry, meaning I had yeah. started putting things out onto social media, but I hadn't, I had, and body hadn't come to it into existence. Yeah. Uh, and so it was this whole, okay, I, I see that there is something that is, is coming, mm -hmm. but now I'm going to actually dedicate my focus to it or my intention to it, maybe not yeah. necessarily focus, but to make something of this. And if it hadn't been for the conversations, not just the conversations with Karen, but just me being open to saying, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do this. I am going to write poetry. I, it, it, things wouldn't have come together. Yeah. It, and in those moments of discomfort, it takes courage to take the next step, doesn't it? So for you, it was a courageous step to commit to writing the poetry and then commit to actually publishing the po poetry because that had never been in your life sphere of where your life could go, was it? Until no, you started channeling. And, and the funny thing is, you know, I in fact was having a conversation with somebody this morning who said to me, how is it that you write a book? Uh, and I just said, you do. And she's like, but it's so scary. You know, I can't do it because I yeah. feel the fear. And I said to her, I also felt a lot of fear. fear. I felt extremely vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, because, And especially with the poetry, because the poems are really personal. They uh, are. You know, the the, the Beautifully... novel fictional story that, I, yeah. that I've concocted. But the poem is different. The poem is really me, really? what I'm going through, what I am mm. feeling, how I see the world. And so to put mm. that out there, I mean, scary, super scary, because people will judge you, people will criticize they do. you, not everybody they do. will like the poem, uh, not everybody will like the poems, you know, mm -hmm. I, I remember <laughs> one of the worst reviews I've gotten was somebody who said to me, it just looks like words that you put together. And I'm thinking, well, isn't that all poetry? The poetry. <laughs> <laughs> just this words that you put together. <laughs> And that's the, that's the thing though, Sony. if you put yourself out there, you open yourself up to criticism and hurtful comments. But the thing is, they can only hurt you and they, they can only, if you allow it to. So you actually have to go, well, that's their opinion and they're entitled to that opinion but I'm actually not going to allow that to stop me because overridingly there's such support for what I do. There's such positive comments. There's such great reviews. So I'm going to keep going anyway. And that's where greatness comes from it from, isn't it? Where you just, you feel uncomfortable, you put it out there, you get some great reviews, you get some bad reviews, but you keep going. That's mm -hmm. the that's the important thing, isn't it? Is to keep on going and not well, stop. Well, the thing also, you know, what I was telling uh, the woman this morning is, mm -hmm. I absolutely felt the fear. It was oh, just, yeah. I did it anyway, so it wasn't easy. It was still a hard thing to go through mm -hmm. on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, if you're living in your purpose, if yes. you're doing the things that bring you joy. Then yes. I said to her, no one was going to stop me. I mean, no. you don't have to like what I do or the things that I share or the That's way that right. I share things. But I stand in it with uh, my sense of passion, my sense of identity yeah. and my yeah. sense of integrity. And so, yeah. you know, I, I will move forward with it. And and yes, it would be delightful if everybody loved the poetry. But they're not going to. Like Realistically, not realistic. that's not, it's not realistic. I actually mm -hmm. remember um, uh, an author friend of mine and he has written oh, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books. And I actually remember him saying to me just, I think just before I hit like the publish button, you know, that, that, uh, the go button, <laughs> which is not actually a button. It's just a, yeah, it's okay to publish with yeah. your head, it's a mental button. <laughs> with your head going, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> he actually said to me, he said, you'll have lots of comments from different people and you will have bad reviews. And my heart sort of skipped a beat. And he said, actually think about 
a bad review as having made it as an author. And so that actually stuck in my brain. And when I did eventually get, I actually only got one bad review, but when I, it was a pretty doozy, it was a doozy of a, of a bad review, but his words stuck in my head. And I remember thinking, okay, I've made it now. I've got my first bad review. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, whatever gets you past that moment of crazy fear, crazy, oh my God, what? who do I think I am? What do I think I'm doing? Why the heck did I decide to publish anything? You have to get over that moment because we all have them, don't we, Sonny? I'm sure that you still have them and will continue to have those moments where you go, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. But greater than that is the beauty of your words, the creativity of your poems and the help that they give to other people across the planet. And that's what keeps you going, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, what is fascinating with that is it, it is scary even even getting on, 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 on stage and reading a poem. Yes. I had to do that two weeks ago and my voice was shaking and I couldn't wait to get off the stage. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those things yeah. that, you know, they said to me, you have five minutes. I think I took barely three minutes um, because I couldn't wait to get off the stage. It, it, it yeah. does still to this day make me really nervous. Yes. Um, and it's, it's because you're putting yourself out there. You're exposing yeah. yourself, but there's still a higher calling. There's still a higher... Uh, yes. a, a, a bigger sort of yes. uh, drive that is pulling you forward yes. to say, yes, that is scary. And I don't know if I will ever learn to live with that, uh, but I'm going to just keep doing it forward. in a way. It's almost because you don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really great thing to say, because sometimes <laughs> you're really not sure where the journey's taking you. You just know it's taking you somewhere and you've just got to stick on that track. And mm -hmm. again, it is scary. Like, I don't want the audience to think that authors aren't fearful that oh, their work's really not going to be accepted because every single one of them would be lying if they said they weren't there weren't elements of fear in putting their work out there and i don't think i've met anyone who's not fearful agreed. i mean even from people who prolific are prolific writers like prolific everybody's fearful of putting their their words out there absolutely so um if you're listening today and think that you've got poetry that you want to write or you've got a book that you want to write then just start you don't have to have it all organized you don't have so sony didn't have any of the poetry organized she just wrote when she was prompted and had the words she wrote them down and it was a step-by-step -step process to get them to publication but the first step in that process is always the hardest and and from our conversations with sony audience you would understand that that was just accepting these words are coming to me i need to write them down and she did it without thought or without <laughs> planning and yeah. that's a beautiful thing though sony it's a really it beautiful but we, thing we're often our own worst enemies you know we oh god yes <laughs> all sorts of reasons of why not to do something mm -hmm. you know we're we're afraid of what people will say, or maybe yeah. we're not good enough, or maybe, yeah. you know, this. What if it fails? Else. What if I fail? Yeah, there's all of these what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. Yeah. But the, the truth is every day is a what if, right? We don't know what's yeah. going to happen in a given day. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't give yourself the chance, then who else will? And that's the thing that I remind myself all the time. It's, it, you, you know, it has to start with me because if I don't put myself out there, how am I going to reach other people or how are people even going to have the opportunity to say yes or no to my poetry uh, that's but, right you know, i have to give myself that chance and everybody should give themselves a chance it's just we yeah, yeah we stand We're so our hard on ourselves yeah yeah but the other thing is too if you're courageous enough to put yourself out there you actually give loads of other people permission to do the same thing mm -hmm. And that means more and more people are living and doing, living with passion, doing things that they love, 
and creating a better world for us all to live in because um, poetry and words are important for humans. That's how we connect. That's how we tell stories. It's an important thing to do. And you don't actually have to get to the point of publication. You may decide that you just want to write for magazines. You might just want to write for your family. You might Mm -hmm. just want to write for your kids. Whatever it is, just start because you never know where that journey is going to take you. And for Sony, it, it actually started with a novel, but the poetry came and it went out to the world and now she's going back to the novel writing and then there's more poetry to come so it hasn't stopped anything it's just increased the creativity for you sony i would think it has and it it, that's the thing that it's about allowing ourselves to the Mm -hmm. space to actually do um another conversation i was having you know somebody was talking about not having time or not having uh, you know, the space or the ide- ideal environment. And I said, you know, the moment this becomes your priority, all mm-hmm. of those excuses fall to the wayside because yeah. when it becomes important to you, you, you will, will do find it. the time and the mm-hmm. space. Yeah. And it actually doesn't have to be a long time. You know, sometimes no. you think like, oh, I have to dedicate days or have to dedicate no. hours. Sometimes it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, Absolutely. 30 minutes. Uh, whatever it is that you can spare, just even starting to write, getting a few words yeah. down it is all that you need to do. Um, and then if you do it every day, uh, you know, it'll it accumulate. It becomes, yes, it becomes habit and mm-hmm. it accumulates and becomes thing. Um, but you just, you got to start. Like you just, you, you got to get out of your own way, give yourself that permission to just see what happens and just start. And there's no one else who's going to give you permission other than no no one's going to give you permission (laughs) no (laughs) not in this world (laughs) not in this world um and i'm so glad that you were courageous enough to take that step and write those words that were coming to you down and form the poetry because knowing you and seeing that more poems and more writings are still coming is just a wonderful thing to observe. And it's a beautiful thing to be part of an author's journey. It's actually a real privilege to see how people grow and develop. And I've known Sony long enough to know that some of those and observe some of those fears and and those fears about public speaking, et cetera, et cetera, and know that there is growth. And I've seen the growth in Sony over that period of time and that will happen to you too so you'll start out as someone and you'll head towards someone else and it's all about following your as you like to say sony trust your soul's destination and we don't have to know where we're going and that's that's part of the beauty that we don't Mm -hmm. always have to know the outcome it's about embracing the moment funny and the journey (laughs) the journeys and the journey because sometimes it's just about being open and when you release Mm -hmm. the expectation of how things should be you know Mm -hmm. that's when all of the 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 world opens up and there's possibility in 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 your life and you never know just where it will take you like i i would never have been able to tell you that i would have three books of poetry absolutely uh, and and much less that you know i would do that all within a span of a year i mean that to me was very quick (laughs) expected and crazy Mm -hmm. Um, so Sony, how it's going to turn out. Absolutely. Um, so we're quickly running out of time again. <laughs> we have so much fun chatting on this show. Um, I want to remind people that you can buy the bestseller Lonely Dove right now, and the links are attached to this interview. You can reach out and jump on Sony's website, sonysing.com. You can connect to Sony on socials and I really encourage you to do that. Um, Connect and chat with Sony and ask her questions about that fear. Ask her questions about channeling poetry. Ask her questions. She loves to connect with people and hear their thoughts. It's been a key part of her experience as a writer. And just a reminder too that each of the poetry books has been released. The first two are now in paperback, so in 
um, body and embrace today and next week in our final show we're going to talk about embolden now you might remember a couple of shows back we talked about flute playing now embolden has a wonderful um, poem about flutes and we're going to share that with you next week and tell you the flute story as well so sony i want to thank you once again for jumping on the show and being so open and sharing with us about your journey um congratulations yet again on bestseller status for lonely dove please go out and buy the book it's a great read um i haven't finished it yet but i'm getting there (laughs) and we will be back next week with sony to talk about the final in the series of her poetry books and to round out all the things we've spoken about for the last six shows sony keep enjoying melbourne i can't wait to chat to you next week yes we will be back (laughs) with Poetry in Motion, same time next week. Thank you, Sony. Thank you for having me. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.